Okay. Good morning. Good morning to everybody once again. Welcome to all the students here. Welcome to those who joined us on our uh, uh, e-platform as well. Um, the last time we've been, we're at our week four, and um, the last time we we were, we had kind of stopped halfway with uh, the topic on the frame of reference. Okay, and. Uh, I thought we'll just go through that once again because we hadn't yet completed that. We can go through that and uh, just briefly give give you a little bit more of a background, and then we'll move into the next uh, topic. So this is the continuation of last class, which we have not completed. Just bear with me. I'll just put the just um, uh, share my screen. Is this visible? Yeah. Okay. All right. So um, we had started with with looking at um, uh, the last week. We were we were looking at the helping relationship and how does a counselor uh, actually work alongside with a counselee? And one of the things that we said is. Maybe I'll just move up a few slides. Okay, so how what what does the council counselee need to do? We looked at the attitudes of the counselor last time, right? So what were the three attitudes we spoke about? Remember, empathy, unconditional positive regard, and genuineness, right? So these are, these are the attitudes that are necessary for a counselor as they are in that relationship. So when you express that attitude, you are facilitating a learning process in the counselee for change. And we said there was EUA, right? And so we looked at exploration. So it helps helps the uh, counselee understand what is going wrong, then understanding. They draw insights uh, on what their problem is, and they, have, uh, they figure out goals. And last is action, where they are moving into that change into those strategies of change. Okay, now how do you do that? So how do you do that by entering into the frame of reference of the counselee? So that's where we had, and we were looking at what does that frame of reference mean? The frame of reference is basically moving from your own world into the world of your counselee, and that's why we said the way in which the counselee sees their world. So that's how you are moving into. You get inside their shoes, getting into their skin, seeing life through their eyes. Okay. We had uh, spoken about this. There are different kinds of frame of reference. One is external. So what is external? The way that I see you or you see me. That's the external view of reference. Internal view of reference is the way I see myself and you see yourself. What we are looking at is the way that when we when we're looking at the frame of reference in counseling what are, how do we respond i can see the world the way that you are seeing it so i understand your view of you i remember we spoke of a, of a house right if if a neighbors if you want to see the road through the through uh, your neighbor's house what should you do you should get out from your house go into their house and see it not look at it from the way that you are seeing it right so that's what that's what um, the frame of reference means. So we we also looked at how do you respond from an internal frame of reference is when <clears throat> the when your counselee makes a, a makes a, a statement, you are responding from from their side or from their end of it. It is from your, your response will lead to your next statement to to your counselee's next statement okay we had we had looked at that again sorry just a minute yeah so when when you as a counselor responds from an internal frame of reference you see this chain this link i hope you're able to see it for those of you who don't have a okay don't have a you have it okay because there is a there is a ppt there so you all can probably log in to see the PPT. Yeah. So um, uh, so when when your frame depends on how you what frame of reference you use. When you use an 
internal frame of reference, you will get a statement that matches that um, uh, matches the, sen the the statements that you are making. Okay. Uh, so yeah. So internal frame of reference. What does it need you to do? You need to understand the counselee on your terms. You that that's what you're doing more on their terms. Sorry, more than more than looking at it from the way you see it. You are understanding the counselee from their terms. You're listening carefully. You're allowing. Uh, the space for them to share whatever their problems or their stories is. You're also paying attention to their nonverbal language and you are responding to their feelings from their point of view. So that is associated to the problem that they may be going through. Okay. So yeah, we were looking at this. What, what actually involves a person's frame of reference? So when you look at this slide, um, the big C is the client uh, or the counselee, and the small C is you, or either ways, it doesn't matter. And you know, know that you have, there is a certain background you come from, a certain culture you come from, uh, certain experience you may have, expectations you may have. The same way, your counselee also comes from their own culture, their environment, their background, their education, right? So think of us all sitting over here. Right? My experience is very different from your experience. If I need to understand your experience, I need to, I can't look at life from the way that I see it. Maybe I've, I've grown all the way here in Bangalore always. Maybe you have come from a different state. Now, I can't understand you if I'm going to sit in this head of mine and say, okay, this is all I can see. But then I should be willing to get into your, your life, into your shoes. So asking those questions, feeling whatever you're saying is what that frame of reference means, OK? Uh, OK, so we were looking at um, what are, how, how does it, how does our response, um, when does our response become irrelevant, OK? And I want to go back to that case that we started off with. You remember Mary's case? Not Mary, Susan's case. Remember Susan? Huh? Ah, they were all the same Susan only. It's I bought him, I bought the same Susan up all the times. Okay, but remember she, we, she was saying about how she's fed up because her husband is prying on her and she has second thoughts of the marriage, right? So think of that case when we when we're looking at this. Now um when you make a statement like this, it, it's written down, why do you quarrel like that? You must be patient with him and love him, right? When you make a response like that, it becomes an irrelevant or an in ineffective response. Why? Yeah, so you are actually responding from your frame of reference, right? You are responding it from the way that you see it. So if you look at it, the, the circle that you see is the counselee's frame of reference and the counselor's frame of reference. So when you respond like that, it does not help. It runs parallelly. You are saying something from your understanding, and your counselee is saying something from their understanding. So it becomes very ineffective or it becomes irrelevant when you say why do you quarrel like that you must be patient with him or you know you must um, uh, you you he you are married to him you know you are you ought to you know just uh, probably be quiet or you ought to not have a divorce so although maybe some of those statements are true we are not reaching them from their frame of reference Okay, so that's how it becomes an irrelevant response. Some of those responses we spoke about earlier becomes irrelevant because it's running parallel to any form of help because you are seeing it in the way that you would probably think of it, right? Or the advice that you would give, but not from their frame of reference, not from the world she's seeing it. Got that? Okay. So for it to be effective, let's look at the next one. When does it become a relevant response? 
when so what is the counselor doing over here if you look at that just the diagram you see the counselor is entering into the frame of reference of your counselee and responding from there so the what are you doing you're listening you're guessing the feeling you're trying to get a good guess of the feeling and you're communicating what you understand and you're probably also checking that understand understanding. So your response should get the feeling, pinpoint the feeling, and the reason for that feeling. So you look at that, um, the, the statement there. You feel hurt because your husband is disappointed in you, or you feel hurt because you're not able to reach your husband, whatever. There is, you see that you have gone into the counselee's life to understand what she may be feeling when she's saying that so that's very important that's when you're pinpointing the feeling and you're responding from there right or you feel confused because you don't know what to do about your marriage so there can be many responses it's not just a single response right because your counseling may be giving you many um in one sentence that she's saying there can be many feelings that you can actually take out so you you're you listen, you're guessing the feeling, and you're communicating that. So when you're doing that, what are you doing? You're actually helping the counselee explore what they are going through. So that's why it says it stimulates. It, I said, remember, I said when you enter into the frame of reference, it stimulates the learning process of exploration, understanding, and action. So by when you get into the frame of reference of your counselee, you're actually stimulating exploration. They begin to explore. Yes, I'm confused. Or yes, I feel really hurt. Or I'm, I'm, I feel extremely bitter at this point of time. So they have explored and they begin to understand what they're feeling. Got that? All right. And then comes, oh, OK. So what are some factors that you need to do in order for them to come to this exploration and understanding. You need to enter into their frame of reference. It's very, very crucial that every time you speak to uh, a counselee, you come to this place where you're able to enter into their frame of reference. And once they have understood and once they have explored and understood, they begin to take action. And that's what you will see in this in this slide. OK, so look at the look at the um, the dialogue in italics, okay? So you're, you've, as a counselor, you've said, you feel frustrated because you can't find what it is about you that displeases your husband. So that's what maybe you're, you as a counselor are saying. You know, you're, uh, this is probably after a few conversations, right? You're saying you feel uh, hurt because your husband is disappointed in you. So she says, yes, I don't know what to do to please him. I don't, I've tried so many things. I have no idea what to do. So she's saying that, right? So then you may say you feel your, your frustration must be quite high because you can't find what it is that displeases you. And so she says, yes, exactly. And then it says, the counselor is saying, you want to find out what it is about you that displeases him. A helpful may, way may be to explore all areas of your personality in relation to him. So you see that the counselor has moved in the direction of an action now. So what is she doing? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, she's saying, I don't know what displeases him. But you know, you're saying maybe a good way is to understand what about your personality is that annoys him? Would you like to look into what maybe your behaviors or what you do actually contributes to the problem? So that's what you're doing. You're actually moving them from that place of exploring understanding to a place of action. She says, then she may say, yeah, I really want to answer. Or she may say, no, I'm not ready for that. I'm so hurt. So then you know that you still have to keep on helping her explore those feelings more and more till she's in a place to say, OK, I'd like to find out what is it that works, that, that will help me sort this out. Maybe I should look at myself. So you see how the focus has moved away from the husband to herself, right? Because that's what you need to do. In counseling, you can't change the other people in the environment. You can't, right? What you're doing is you're getting them to think about ways 
they can number one look at their own problems or their issues bring about the change and how they can work that change so that their environment will change you get that and that you can do only when you enter into their frame of reference for example um you know maybe another way to say is you you want to find out what is it that displeases him um what what do you think are some behaviors in you that you could change to make your relationship better with your husband so what are you doing you're making her think about what is it that she could do to sort this out she then she may say um, maybe one thing i must do is really speak up when i'm upset i must speak up so good so you've got her to act upon something she's come to a place where she's able to act so this understanding and exploring should move into that place of action getting them to act on whatever their concern or their issue is. All right, did you get that? Okay, because if you're going to say you get that, I'm going to give you certain examples and we're going to start, start that, okay? All right, before I do that, I'll just show you what are some responses that come from an external frame of reference. He is your husband, no, after all. Does that come from an external frame of reference? Yes, right? Oh, you poor thing, how are you managing? Right? Or you let yourself get upset far too easily. Now, these are things we say to our friends, you know, right? Or you could change all this by just feeling differently. Just begin to feel differently. Or I think you're doing the right thing by not letting him step on you like that. Now, this is all from the way that you may be seeing it, right? As against internal frame of reference is you seem upset with his behavior. You feel annoyed when he doesn't give you space. You feel disappointed at the way he treats you. You're worried that if this goes on, your marriage can be in danger. So you see, there are so many feelings that you can actually get from what is happening, right? So I want you to remember that this isn't a one-off statement, that you say this once and then ready, you're ready for action. No, it may go many times up and down and up and down and up and down till, the, till you kind of sense that, you know, they are able to explore their feelings and go through whatever has happened and then bring up the question of um, you know if you find that your marriage is in danger if there was one thing you could do about it what do you think you would do about yourself then you've moved them into action then they may say no i'm still very upset i still am very angry so you know that's not the right time you have to come back and continue to help them to express what they are feeling what in, okay, so I said this example that I took. Okay, so I may say you're worried that if this goes on, your marriage can be in danger. I may say that. So she says, yes, I'm very, I'm concerned that, you know, if this goes on like this, we'll be separated, right? And so then I kind of think, okay, let me try and see if she's ready to move into action. So I may say, if there's one thing that kept your marriage out of danger, what is that one thing you would relook about yourself? Right? So I've changed the entire sentence in such a way to help her see that, you know, if she could save that marriage, what would she like to do? Right? I, the action. So she may say, okay, I, I should probably speak up. I should, whenever I'm hurt, I should speak up. She may say that. Or she may say, no, I can't think of any of that. I'm so upset. I'm so hurt. I'm very angry with him. Which means I know she's not ready for action yet. So I will go back into exploring that anger. So I may ask, I can see that it's it's really, you know, you're filled with that anger. Could you tell me more? So then I'm helping her express a little bit more. And then I may get her to move into that action. If that anger could be resolved, what is that one thing you'd like to do? So again, I'm trying to move her into another form of action, right? So counseling is basically not that one way. You may need to explore this way, that way to get them to really um de deal with whatever they are going through maybe it's the anger she is she needs to deal with right now more than the marriage because that's what i found out so so i help her to explore that got that okay all right shall we go to oh okay sorry there's more um now if you needed to initiate action right i said the first we were talking about is just feelings if you needed to initiate action from the internal frame of reference you may say things like this you seem upset with his behavior and you're hoping to discuss this with him so what is the action here 
discussion to discuss with him right or you feel annoyed when he doesn't allow you space and you're looking at ways you can let him understand your need so what is the action here right she make she may tell him something so that he can understand that becomes an action right okay or you feel upset disappointed at the way he treats you have you considered talking to him about your feelings okay that's again an action point you worried that if this goes on your marriage uh, can be in danger help me understand what could both of you work on to save this marriage again you see action points here right so it's it's what you're doing is in, in none of this do you see that you're giving a suggestion right you are getting them to think about what saves their marriage or how she can talk to him about his her feelings how can she discuss her need all of this comes from as a question it hasn't come as a statement you get that okay all right so let's look at some examples all right now this is uh, even for the online students i'd like you to also respond okay so you could either unmute and speak or put in your thoughts so i've kept the next couple of minutes just for example so that uh, you know we we get this thoroughly before we move on because if we don't get this um, it's going to be hard all right so the person is saying i'm worried sick i don't sleep well and i'm afraid for the ki kids we're so short of money and my husband has started to drink again what how will you respond don't tell me what you will do i don't want to know what you will do what is the first thing you will say you know what why don't you write it down take some time to write it down and then say because otherwise you know it it gets difficult so if you'd like to write down please do that online students you could also respond please not you could also you must also respond so first think about what should you be thinking about ah empathy okay so what should you be looking for yeah so first thing you need to is what do you think this person's feeling what is their significant feeling frustration uh yeah okay sadness tension she said one she said i'm worried sick she's worried worried then what else we're so short of money and my husband has started to drink again what is that feeling a lack or a fear fear that of right so you've identified that through this so many feelings have come out right okay now attach the feeling to to the why you feel dash because so come on try Francis want to try okay yes uh, I really empathize with you okay so Anthony um, when you say that that becomes a very general statement right so it's probably so why is it necessary to pick up specific details is because your counselee would have learned to or uh, uh, sorry would know that you have paid very close attention to the details they are saying yes prince so you have to pinpoint the feeling so uh, write a statement for me of what you will say are you afraid where will this lead your family okay so if in other way, ways you could say it another way you seem to be afraid because you don't know where this will lead your family good that's good okay so you're putting it as a statement more than a question right unless you are unsure if you're not sure that this is afraid you wouldn't ask this question others you can put it as a statement you seem afraid because you don't know where this will lead your family excellent wonderful good others
Anand, they're writing. Nikhil, writing. Francis, thinking. <laughs> okay, come on, I need a few more uh, responses. That's sad to hear. You look very distressed. Okay, so um, uh, more than so again, the when when we say things like maybe that's sad to hear, or oh you poor thing, it looks more sympathetic than empathetic. Okay, so it's a good thing not to use words, not to use statements like oh so sad or. Um, you know, it, um, it, it's, it's, it's so terrible for you, right? So it, it makes it a little bit more sympathetic than empathetic. So you, you've got one part of you. You look very distressed. That's good. So you look very distressed. Why? You must say, why? You look very distressed because it doesn't look like you've slept very well and, and uh, you, you seem to be extremely afraid, right? Or you look really distressed because you don't sleep. You can pick up anything that you think has brought emphasis to you. Sometimes they emphasize on one certain thing. Jack, and you've written, you must be feeling really stressed and overwhelmed. Again, why? Because that will help you to build your action. Right? So you, when you say you must be feeling really stressed and overwhelmed because... Um, because your finances are short, right? Now that becomes your action point, something about the finances you may want to bring up as an action point, right? So always try and bring up, not always, as best as possible. Maybe in your initial uh, conversation, you may just, it's okay to just say you feel stressed and overwhelmed, but then as the conversation goes on and they're building on that stress and overwhelm, you may need to have the a behavioral point so that you can build an action on that. Okay? Yeah. Any more? Okay. Good. But there are too many uh, sentences or too many questions. So what when when you're saying this, what should she pay attention to? Uh-huh. Okay, so there is there any possibility to speak with a husband becomes a direct suggestion. Isn't it? So you could say something you feel extremely stressed and uh, disappointed. If there was one thing that you could do to sort this with your husband, what would that be? So I haven't given a suggestion. If there was one thing you could do to uh, work this with your husband, what would you do? Or what would it look like? So she may say, maybe I should talk to my husband's brother. Or maybe I should talk to my husband itself. Or maybe I should, you know, not go home today. I don't know. There can be very many things. So you're not suggesting one specific thing. You're getting her to understand how she'd like to work that out. Right? So you, you may know that something has to be done with what is happening with the husband. So you could ask something like, if there was one thing that you can do about the situation, what is that one thing you'd do? So I haven't said about the husband. So you're giving a direction of, of the action point. But nevertheless, we're just saying, if you had to pinpoint the feeling, in-person students, use your mic when you share your responses so that we can hear. You want to repeat that? Uh, uh, repeat it so that they can hear. Uh, OK, next time on, we'll do that. Thanks, uh, thanks Prince. OK, so. Um, uh, uh, yeah, so even here, Jackin, when you've written, would you consider discussing the situation with your husband? It's again becomes a very direct suggestion. All right? So 
don't look right now i'm asking please don't look at action let's not look at action just look at how you can explore pinpoint the feeling just focus on that ah use the mic and uh, i mean see how the judge said also like if you are telling her to discuss or to talk it it literally mean that we are giving suggestion right so uh so we should not do so we can ask what you could do to resolve the problem like that we yeah, can so, so you can say you you seem extremely stressed and worried right and it appears that you feel you need to do something so if there was that one thing you could do to change the situation what would it look like what would you do right hmm. the other side of the coin is like uh, if you are asking like that if she can do something and all she might be doing by herself only right why she will come to us like what is the need of us to asking them like what you can do so very often anand when someone comes to you uh, very often people know that there should be something they have to do when you're coming with a problem even if you're confused somewhere they may have an idea or they may have some kind of an inkling which may not have been well thought of but in a conversation so when i'm talking to you a lot of things become crystal clear in my head right now i'm talking to you about something and as you are voicing out and as you're talking about it you begin to say yeah maybe i should try this or you know i've thought about it maybe now i should do it so a, a conversation really helps to build that idea and okay so suppose she may know ah, she needs to talk to her husband but how is she going to do it what is she going to say when does she want to do it who should be there all of that happens while we are conversing so you are actually building that conversation to a point that once she leaves the session she say okay i'd like to go do this today because she's spoken about it she's she's given it that much of details got that so you just think about yourself when you have a problem the more that you talk to somebody about it the more ideas you get isn't it right or the more that you write it out you'll say okay now i know what to do so people to to and that's why they come to be able to get clarity in their minds about what should be done or a direction they should go what what they can do can we consider giving some suggestions like how how they can do so again more than giving the suggestion to elicit it from them like for example she says okay i think i must talk to my husband about this okay my question be when when do you think would be the right time to do it okay so i'm not saying do it today she says ah maybe i will do it tomorrow because my husband is this 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 this, this. so she says okay all right so so the when has come out she said she will do it do it tomorrow okay so so then i'll say if you were to speak about this what is the first two things that you would want to tell him so then she may say okay i want to talk about no money i want to talk about this i'm not giving other suggestion because in my mind i'm saying okay she needs to do money or she needs to do about kids that may be in my mind but she may say uh, uh, no don't drink again or she may say something else i don't know right so when i'm saying what are the two things that you would want to do to uh, or what are the two things you will tell him when you're discussing this okay then she she may say this so then i may give a, a what if uh, what are you expecting his response to be i'm i'm giving a, a more imaginary question for her to prepare for let's say uh, he doesn't listen or he goes and drinks again and so i'm preparing her so i'm saying well, what if what do you expect the response to be so she may say i think he will go back and drink again right so i said okay all right so if that happens what would you do next hmm. we will give a break here so if she tell like uh, like what you gonna do like in uh, in what way you gonna speak and then if if she say if you feel if you are counselor if you are a counselor if you feel like that's a that's a thing that should not do 
like that. she should not speak like that so can we stop her there and that we can suggest maybe maybe uh, you, you should not do I, like I that. know what you're saying what if she going to go to the police okay and you you while you're thinking you're saying okay maybe that's some she could try something else i won't tell her you know that's not a good idea what i will say is okay if that's what you want okay let's look at the pros and the cons what could be the benefits of this what could be the problems in this doing that right so i'm making her think okay the the benefit will be 1 2 3 the problems will be 10 maybe so she herself is talking about it right so then i say okay so when you evaluate that situation do you what do you think about that idea is that something you want to do and she may say no looking at the many negatives maybe i should try something else okay if not for this what else could you do you know so you are actually helping her to do the thinking you're not doing the thinking for her but you're directing the conversation in such a way that she can think about is this the right situation or the solution to do right or let's suppose she says okay i'm going to go to the lawyer and get a divorce what if she says that right so maybe that's again another question that says okay uh, if by doing that i'm going to ask her what's going to change for you today she says, no nothing's going to change today all right so is there something that you would want? so i'm defocusing from that okay i will have a divorce into if there was something that can be changed today or something you can do to change this situation of the money, what's the first thing you will do? You get that? In life, we should not direct them. Uh, we should not give any suggestion, direct suggestion to them. Or else we should not ask questions also. But we can we can make them think. So actually, all of counseling is about questions, good questions. And empathizing these are the two main things that you will find in counseling good questions so that's why you should the more you learn to get good questions the better your sessions will will be more enriched okay because they're doing the thinking themselves finally they will say okay this person didn't tell me anything but i'm very clear in my head yeah, why I'm yeah Exactly. But you have come to that, the counselee has come to that point that they have become, have had clarity on what they should do. And all you did was responding to them with, with, uh, with empathy. And also you have, you have not judged them for what they've done. I didn't say, oh, divorce is not a good thing. You can't divorce. I didn't say that. I only said, okay, what is that? How is that going to benefit you? Or what could be the problems that come from that. So I've looked at two ways. So she herself has thought about it, right? So I have no judgment there. And then just I'm just being very genuinely interested in what will happen to her. So these are attitudes is what really helps you to work with people rather than being judgmental or giving them suggestions, all of that. Okay? Uh, I think someone else. Yeah. You want to say something, Nina? I mean, it's like, I know, uh, we can say like this, No, I know you're very much worried and stressed out now. Uh, right now, I'm sending you some food. Take rest. We will <laughs> we will see to this uh, after, after later. Um, so, so when they're coming to you, they're actually coming to talk. Right? Uh, so so that that again i mean i don't think it, it's not a bad thing to do but as a conversation you're really what do you want is to for them to yeah so you may need to you know you could say you know you seem you seem uh, worried you seem distressed it appears like you haven't eaten also um, you know, have you eaten anything today? You can uh, definitely ask that, right? And maybe after the session, would you like that I get you something or that is something? That you definitely can, but that doesn't become the focus, right? Because we're moving away from the focus of what she's probably trying to tell you. Okay? All right, let's try and look at another example. Yes, uh, Nina, I think you've raised your hand. Go ahead. 
Nina? Yeah, uh, I, I don't know if I'm, I'm still behind. I mean, I've been listening to what has been said. Are you able to hear me? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. So uh, to, I'm not sure if I'm coming back, but uh, maybe I, we could say since we want her to come up with uh, the direction as to where she would like to go. So I would say that this must be really difficult. But uh, what would you like to do or where do you want to start to kind of, yeah, to take this problem, this problem thing forward? So is that okay? I mean, I don't know if we have gone forward, we've gone ahead uh, in the thing, but I, that's what I thought. Is yeah. that okay? Yeah. Uh, your response is excellent. That is, that's, uh, I, I do agree. We may have gone a bit ahead. Um, yeah. then when she's probably telling you this the first time, you need to stick with it for some time till all the emotions are out. And then you could probably say, yeah, all of this sounds really difficult. It's hard for you to take. If there's one place you'd like to start, what's the first place? That's an excellent uh, uh, response as well. Okay, But maybe that's a little later into the, into the okay. conversation. Okay. 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 Uh, let's look at one more, one more, one more. Uh, Example, yeah. I hate it when the other boys tease me. Don't they realize I have feelings too? Oh my, did I take, okay. Yeah, your responses. What would you say? Francis. What to say? Say, what will you tell them? I hate it when the other boys tease me. Don't they have? Don't they realize I have feelings too? I was uh, like, I don't know if it would, it will be effective or not. But first question will be like, as a counselor, like I last like, like I understood like what you're feeling. Uh, What's the no, no, I understood. Like you, you will feel something. What are they feeling? So okay. Feel yeah, you will feel sad when other boys tease. Okay. Like uh, then, how you want to overcome that? So let's not go to the action. Actually, okay. just say a sentence that helps to think positively. How you want to be like with the other boy? How how you are thinking? No action. Everything, all of that is action, right? How do you want to be? What should you do? All of that is getting into an action to resolve this. We're not looking at that. We're just looking at how can you figure out or pinpoint this feeling? Anybody else? Uh, okay, Jackin's written, oh, you must be feeling so hurt. Okay, okay. Hmm. Okay. I'm so sorry to hear that. Uh, I feel uh, like you are so distressed uh, by this. Can I go to action? No, no, no. no. Just, just keep it up. Okay. And students, online students. Okay, Prince says, it seems you're broken because they're not realizing that you have feelings too. Very good. Very good. Good, Prince. He's a counselor. Yeah, he's a counselor. <laughs> Nikhil? I would like to also ask, like, what are you feeling? So, so that... what do you think they're feeling? You should be able to guess the feeling. When you're listening to something, you're guessing the feeling. Like, if you're looking so sad. So, I would like to ask like that. So he will tell something. Okay. Okay. So you're looking sad. All right. So you can say something like, "It must be so isolating for you that everyone is teasing you and you feel all alone." Right. So, so you know, they will build on that. What you're saying. Why is it important to really pinpoint the feelings? Because your your counsel is going to build on what you're saying. Okay. Anyone else? From online students? Anyone else who would like to? 
those who haven't answered please please attempt because this is important this is practical nobody okay let's try another one Okay, next one. You're able to see that, right? No? Why aren't you able to see that? Wait, I've got to take this off. One minute. Okay, Anthony said, you must be feeling so unhappy when you're teased. Very good. That's also good. Okay, next one. I work so hard all day and I dislike coming home to a sulking wife and demanding children. I work so hard all day and I dislike coming home to a sulking wife and demanding children. Sulking means... Uh, no. Mm, you, sulk is you, you look very annoyed and very, very disappointed. You don't have a happy face. Okay, what will you say? <laughs> okay, uh, so build on that more than when you say I can understand. Pinpoint at what the feeling could be. Yeah, it must be really hard after coming home and seeing uh the faces of your family it it may it probably looks very unwelcoming to you that they don't they don't look happy to see you yeah what did it say ravali ravali said something that must be tiring for you to handle things at home after a long work day okay it must be a burden to handle very good 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 you're like getting the flow of it any more? You know, actually, we should be having more conversations on this, which we'll probably have later. You know, I'll pick each of you, and you all should be. We'll talk about a problem. You all be the counselor. Maybe I'll talk about the problem, and then we keep having the conversation. This is just one, one, one line. No, in some time we'll have more greater things. Okay, it's fun. <laughs> all right, let's try one more. We have two more minutes. Let's try one more. Uh, okay, when my wife and I were together, we did a lot for others. After she died, I'm much more selfish. <laughs> uh, Okay, so princess, it's for the earlier one. It dries you more after working for a long day. Good, very good. Okay, this one, new one. When my wife and I were together, we did a lot for others. After she died, I'm much more selfish. Yeah. So what are the different emotions you can... I'm sure your wife's death has a great impact on you. Very good, excellent. Yeah, your wife's death was probably very impactful for you. Good. And so, what do you expect when you say a sentence like this from this person? What? Yeah, but what do you think they may share? She may, sh he may share. Yeah. So, so what are you doing through that? They're actually uh, thinking and exploring what they feel and what they're going through, right? So, it's that's that's excellent. Okay, it must be a difficult thing for you to handle things alone. Okay, good. Yeah, so you can say that it really appears that you are missing your wife a lot, right? And uh, a lot of things that you all did together, you don't, you no more can do. That's good. You can say that. Right. Remember, there's no when you're when you're dealing with a feeling, there is nothing wrong. 
different way. Right. Exactly. So that's that's what we should move away from. It's not about suggesting. It's about feeling what they are feeling. That's you're entering into the frame of reference every time that you're doing that. Not the normal. Yeah, we we normally very clued to do to say give a suggestion. Right. Okay. Uh, Prince said, "Are you feeling sad? Then your normal being, generous like before when you're with your wife." Are you feeling sad? Then, uh, then can you hear me? Sorry, uh, Prince, I'm not able to read that well. Uh, can you unmute can you and say that once? Hello, can you hear me, ma'am? Hello, hello. Mike, ma'am, can, can you hear me? Good, very good, good. So losing losing a spouse can be very challenging, and it and you find that it's manifesting itself in its behavior or otherwise. Very good, excellent, good. You're like getting it. Very good, very good, very good. Okay, let's have a break and uh, we'll come back. Excellent, good job. 